Hey, good afternoon and good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. I uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to uh, get to talk to both customers and partners. Uh, we are very excited about where 5, 5G and private LTE is, is heading and uh, have seen a lot of success in the U.S. market to date uh, for you know, new deployments and, and customers. Uh, and a little bit about buy sells for those that don't know much about us. Uh, one of our main slogans is we connect more with less. Uh, we are disruptively priced and have very innovative technology based around the LTE and uh, moving into 5G. Uh, we really kind of stand on three pillars, which are us being affordable, being standard-based, and us being easy to use. Uh, BuySales uh, has about 600 employees worldwide. 70% of that goes into R&D. Uh, we also are highly involved in organizations like ORAN, ONGO, WISPA, uh, we are going to be attending the uh, Wisp America show in Dallas uh, next month. So if you are attending that, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to meet with you. Uh, with that said, I'm going to kind of hand things over to Majdi, and he's going to go over some of our, our new and exciting products as we move into the 5G roadmap. Majdi, you want to take great. it over? Yes, great. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, by sales, uh, we do have end-to-end -end solution. Um, it's the core, the RAN, and the user equipment. So the, the top layer here is the core. Um, we deploy it in different ways. Um, first, it can be deployed as an embedded EPC. It's within the uh, eNodeB itself. So everything is local. There is no S1 uh, connection to, to the core. Um, another way we deploy the, um, the EPC is via cloud. We have our own BISELF Cloud EPC and it's based on Azure. The third way is on-premise. Uh, we call it local EPC and it's installed on um, um, standard x86 servers. When we talk about core, it's not just EPC, that's for LTE. Uh, it's the IMS. This is for the voice services like Volte. And then we have the NMS network management. Um, Serve, uh, server, which is, we call it OMC. Um, this is where you actually monitor and, and upgrade the, uh, and check all the performance and the KPIs for your network. And <clears throat> last but not least is the billing system, we call it BOSS. So all these parts are, uh, uh, all these components are part of um, the core for LTE. Now 5G, there is no uh, EPC anymore. It morphed into other functions within the uh, 5G. So we have a separate 5G core that I'll take up the, um, for the 5G technology. Then we have the RAN part, which I'll cover in a minute. And then the uh, user equipment for the CPEs. Um, we start with the outdoor eNode Bs. Um, we do have two types of eNode Bs, the integrated, and the, the distributed. Um, the, the difference is, you know, uh, when we talk about 5G, the RAN has split into three three different functions: the uh, the RG unit, and the distributor unit, distribution unit, and the central unit. So RU, CU, and DU, depending on the split. And in your use case, um, it, it, that's how we design the, uh, the the RAN part for the 5G. So um, this slide will show you the X axis, the Y axis right here is the coverage, which is the, um, the uh, power per port, transmit power per port. Um, and then the X axis right here is the uh, number of users. So we, we have um, radios from starting two, uh, at 250 milliwatts per, per, per transmit port and all the way to 20. So our entry is, um, I'm not going to talk about the existing ones because, you know, but, but um, I'm going to focus on, on the new products and the 5G products. But we do have um, like uh, um, low power outdoor eNode Bs. And then uh, we have the EBS bands. This is 441 and 42. Sorry, band 41. We have the 243 and Nova 246. Um, these are this. Uh, let's talk about the 243. This is band 41, and uh, the modulation is 64 qam on both downlink and uplink. Throughput is is um, depending on the um, 
on the configuration, um, if you choose um, SA1, uh, you get more th uh, throughput on the uplink. SA2, you get it more on the, on, on a downlink. So the, the, the max is 110 and 28. Then we go into the higher uh, out, uh, power output right here, 246. This is two by 20 watts. The Nova 243 is, is two by 10 watts. So you double the power here. And uh, we've introduced the uh, dual carrier here. So this has dual carrier uh, uh, mode, which will expand your coverage. And the, 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 um, it has also Volti and circuit uh, switch fallback features. And the throughputs are the same, maximum uh, 110, on a, on, a, on a downlink and 28 on an uplink. Then we have the Nova 436Q. This is widely deployed and it is uh, four by one watt and it's for CBRS band 41. Uh, we've introduced carrier aggregation here. So it has dual carrier and carrier aggregation mode depending on, on, on how you're gonna deploy it. If you want um, coverage, uh, you go with a dual carrier. If you don't, if you want capacity and throughput, you go with a carrier aggregation. It aggregates two carrier components on a downlink, and um, the the modulation tells 64 qualm on both uh, uplink and downlink. Uh, throughputs here in, in the carrier aggregation mode, it would double the the standard uh, one, a single carrier that will take us in a downlink because we don't have any carrier aggregation on an uplink. So. Um, the maximum throughput is 220 megabits per second on a, on a downlink and 28 megabits per second on an uplink. Right, hey, Machi. So, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the uh, the rules of the FCC with CBRS and and why we uh, we kind of yes. stop at at one watt with that correct. radio? Yes, correct. Because the uh, the CBRS they have. Uh, different CBSD categories. They have A, B, and EUD. CAT A is um, for indoor uh, use, and it has to be installed less than six uh, meters. And uh, the maximum uh, transmit AIRP per 10 megahertz of, of a bandwidth is 30 dBm, which is one watt. I mean, that's, that's the maximum, uh, including the gain an uh, antenna. And for this CBSB Cat B, uh, that's for the outdoor, and it's 47 dBm, which is um, uh, 50 watts. That that that's the maximum. And then you have the EUD, which the maximum uh, power is uh, 23 dBm. That doesn't need to be connected to to a SAS, but the CP, you know, the CBS, the A and B, they, they need to be governed by the SAS, but the AUD does not. And you don't have to have CPI, you know, certified inst installer to, to install the AUD. Um, so that's that's the limiting factor. Here for CBI, for band 41, we don't have this limitation, so we can go as, you know, as, as much as we can. But for CBRS, we have limits uh, to be, to, as per per standards, and as I mentioned, the maximum is 47 dBm um, per 10 megahertz. Right. So we have a new product. We call it Nova 430. It comes uh, whether in an internal integrated antenna or external antenna. You get the option. Um, this is like the 436, but with a lower power. So it's four by 250 milliwatts, and it has the option of a built-in antenna uh, that's 13.5 uh, dBi. Other than that, it's the same. The number of users is 96 plus 96 if you choose the uh, dual carrier mode. And uh, you will have, if you, if you choose the carrier aggregation mode, you will only have 96 users, but the, the throughputs would double. So throughput's gonna be the same. Uh, 220 and uh, 28. That's the maximum, depending on the uh, the assignment, the subframe assignments, and your special subframe assignments that you choose in the configuration. Um, so this, um, it is, it, you get the option to have it internal or external antenna. But with 436, it, it, it is external antenna. Then we have a new product right here that we. Uh, we're marketing for the RDOF. 
um, and it's LTE Turbo. This product is a gigabit product uh, because it will aggregate LTE and Wi-Fi 6. So that's how you're gonna end up with gigabit speed and it has its own CPE. So from the LTE part, it's four by, 20, uh, by 250 milliwatts. And the Wi-Fi part is four by uh, 500 milliwatts. And it is two carrier aggregation uh, on the LTE. Um, and uh, you get, in, you get, you get um, internal Wi-Fi antenna and internal GPS antenna, but you, you get external uh, CVRS antenna here, four by four uh, port antenna. It supports multi-user MIMO technology. And um, the, the, in theory, the speeds can go actually close to two gigabits per second. That's in, in, in theory, but um, in, in practice, probably, you know, it's around one gigabits per second or, or a little bit more, depending on the, um, the deployment and the uh, quality of, of the environment here. Um, moving on, uh, Nova 846, that's, that's um, totally new platform that we used. Here we used, uh, it was Qualcomm here, it's an XP platform. This has an eight port uh, radio, so it's eight by five watts. Each, each port can um, transmit five, five watts of power, which is 37 dBm. And this will support band 41 and band 48. It, is, it has dual carrier and carrier aggregation, two carrier components on a downlink. We increased the number of users, so you get 128 plus 128 uh, in the DC uh, mode. And it's four by four MIMO. So the other ones right here, they're not they're two by two. So this is four by four MIMO, and the modulation is 64 QAM on a downlink, and on on our roadmap we have 256 QAM. So that would double the throughput right there, and then um, 64 QAM on on an on an uplink. The the because of the four by four, um, that would double the throughput. You will get maximum throughput, so 440 megabits per second on a downlink and um, 28 uh, on an uplink. And once we uh, we have also the uh, carrier aggregation on the uplink on the roadmap, that, that's how you can also double the, uh, um, the, the uplink to from 28 to 56, right? So that's, that's the integrated part. Then we have the distributed and the 5G. As I said, they're no longer in one box. Then you know we have the RRU and then the BBU, and they connect through CIPRI or eCIPRI. That's the optical interface. Um, CIPRI for LTE and eCIPRI for the 5G. What's good about this Gamma 846? Yeah. So what, yeah, one thing to mention here: um, Nova is our trademark for outdoor integrated E B. So whenever you hear, when you see Nova, that's that's the outdoor uh, uh, model. Gamma, it's for the distributed and 5G. So this is 5G ready. It is eight ports, eight by five watts, and we do support 5G bands in 41 and in 78. In 78, you know, it's it's the C band and it's uh, it includes the N48 as well. You know, this is this is from 3300 all the way to 3800, and uh, you know. Band 48 is from 35 to 37 uh, right here. So uh, it, it is included in, in there. So you can think of it as in 70, uh, in 41. Then B41 and B48 is for the LTE technology. So this is 5G ready. Once you put it up on that tower, that's it. Uh, you, you have both technologies, 4G and 5G. You don't have, to, uh, you know, if you move, if you want to move to 5G, um, you don't have to go up and, and change, uh, swap any any radios or add anything. It's it's there. Um, what's good about this too? It aggregates four carrier components on a downlink, and uh, on an LTE technology, and for the 5G, it's one carrier components. 
5G and input, what's the difference between N41 and B41 or N78 and B48 or N41 and B40, sorry, N48 and B48 is the bandwidth. 5G bandwidth are increased for the sub six gigahertz um, in to, to 100. You know, for LTE, you get 5, 10, 15, and 20, but for 5G, the, the bandwidth is, is, is um, all the way up to 100. And for the 5G, you have the dynamic spectrum sharing technology. That's why the same band can be shared by 4 uh, LTE and 5G. That's one of the um, basics of, of uh, 5G technology. Um, so um, it is 4 by 4 MIMO. It's 88R, and it has a smart beam forming um, feature where you know the radio won't just transmit Sig, you know, uh, the signal all over the broadcast, the signal all over the place. It just, it is, it focuses on the users and uh, that will reduce uh, interference. It has also an embedded Halo Beam, which is, uh, you know, mini EPC uh, in it too. The CIPRI, um, you know, option eight is this, the traditional um, RRU and the BBU. And you have the split seven two, where you actually can uh, control the bandwidth um, and have the DU function and the CU function placed in, in a different uh, hardware. That's that's for in the 5G um, realm right here. So that's the the um, radio unit, and it needs to connect to the BBU. So BBU controls the actual um, you know um, number of users and the uh, the throughput and everything no more this is just a you know radio with with the antenna technology um, but all the smarts and all the uh, the the actual computing is done on the BBU side so this BBU uh, handles three carriers two by two or two carriers four by four. And it is it is um, there is a PCIe card right here, which is the BBU 4G card. It's Bicell's BBU 4G card. Uh, it's done via uh, PCI card right here. Um, carrier aggregation it aggregates on both downlink and uplink two carrier components. So you double you double the throughput on 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 um, on the uh, uplink here. Um, number of users are increased also 256. Um, concurrent users per cell, and the modulations uh, 64 and 64. But on the, uh, very soon on, on on the roadmap, we have the 256 QAM modulation um, coming up on, on on the downlink. So throughputs uh, 220 and 28, but with the 256, you're gonna get to 440 and 56. So um, will end up with double the uh, the throughputs on on a second um, drop in here. So um, what's going to come up first is the 220, uh, 28, and then after that you will have uh, you will double the throughputs on both. Um, so now the 5G BBU is is we it comes in two different architecture, whether x86 or ARM servers. So you will start with the gamma. That's the radio that supports both technology. And then you will have the LTE BBU. And then you need the 5G BBU to be able to handle the 5G traffic. So um, you will end up with, with two uh, BBUs, one for LTE and one for uh, 5G. We also have another version where you actually can just insert PCI cards and the same box can handle both technologies, 5G and 4G, but it has to be on, on, a, on a 5G x86 box. All right. Moving on to the indoor E-Node Bs. Um, it's the same. We have the integrated and distributed. Integrated, we have the Neutrino 430. This would give you a solid entrance into the private LTE markets. Uh, it is a 4 by 250 milliwatts. And the uh, transmit power is 24 dBm. That's uh, the 250 milliwatts. It has dual carrier and carrier aggregation mode, and it aggregates on on two carrier components on a downlink. It has a 3 dBi built-in antenna, 
96 by 96 users. So um, in, in from for the, from the synchronization, it used one uh, 1588 uh, version two. It has an embedded APC, and the modulations are 64 QAM on both the downlink and the uplink. And uh, you will get the same throughputs as the, uh, as the uh, 436Q, the outdoor, which is 220 and 28. Then we have the, the uh, distributed and 5G indoor E node Bs. Um, remember gamma, gamma is for the distributed and 5G. This gamma 430, it, it is 5G ready. It has both, it's four by it's four by 250 milliwatts, and it has it supports band N48, N41, B48, and B41. It, it said so that's why it's called dual mode. It is 4G and 5G. Um, it has an external high air gain antenna, um, and the the it, it's the same concept for carrier aggregation on LTE and only one carrier on a 5G. That's why you, you get a bandwidth of, a, of 100 megahertz right here. Um, it is it is four by four MIMO and the diversity is 44R. Uh, you can mount it on the ceiling or on the wall and it connects for the indoor technology right here. We have what's called an extension unit or an R hub. This connects, this is like a, it's an extension because you can hack connect up to eight RRUs into the extension unit. And then the extension unit would have the front hole um, Cypric optical connection to the uh, BBU. BBUs are the same, uh, like what I've um, showed you in the previous page. So we have the 4G or LTE BBU in 5G BBU right here. And we have also another hub for the 5G, um, um, you know, for the 5G BBUs right here. And then we have the Gamma 833. This has eight ports. Uh, we don't have exactly the same feature, but, but most of, you know, it's gonna be more or less the same but with with more with eight ports, so you can have have more um, capacity in here. Now, this is kind of um, how the indoor distributed solution is is done. If you remember the extension unit, that's we call it a hub. We call it an extension unit actually, or our hub, and it takes up to four eight radios. And then you can stack up to four extension units that will form a hub. So this this BBU um, will support three cells. So depending on 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 are you interested in capacity or in, in coverage, that that determines how you're gonna lay out the the cells. So you can have up to three hubs connected. And each hub can have up to four extension units, and each extension unit can have to up to eight. Think of it's like a you know like the uh, Wi-Fi APs uh, structure. So uh, you have 512 subscribers per cell, and um, up to you know eight by four, up to 32 um, radio per cell. So this is 32 if we populate every um, extension unit, you're gonna up, have to up to 32 uh, radios uh, per cell. It's straightforward. Um, these are ethernet connections, and then you have the stacking through done through the fiber up to four, and then the front hole also fiber to the BBU. And then from the BBU, you back hole to the, um, core okay and it has all the features it has the sun and and uh, it can be managed through a uh, network management system which is our omc right here this is another way just to to put it in perspective um, for instance this is an office you have this floor which well you know the whole floor we can look at it as cell one 
and it has like three radios in here. And then you have two floors you consider as cell two, and it has uh, like six um, radios in here. I mean, the way we look at this, I mean, once you are in the cell, I mean, if you move from here to here to here, there is no handovers because you're in the same cell. So that will reduce the signaling and, and um, it improves, you know, there is no handover once you are in the cell. And these are connected to the extension units or the hubs. And then the hub would be connected to um, the BBU, which is virtualized and you have virtual machines, um, you know, on, on the uh, virtual, uh, virtualized environment in here. This can be used in, in uh, you know, malls, shopping centers, universities, big offices. You can have this uh, kind of setup. And remember, these are 5G radios too. And if you need, uh, if you have B 4G BBU, you will be catering for, for LTE radios, LTE technology. Just add the 5G BBU and you'll be taking care of, of the 5G traffic. This is another example, you know, on a, on a 50 store building. Um, this is how you can get it covered again, depending on, on capacity and, you know, you can either, we call it cell merging, you know, you can merger, merge the cells, merge the floors into one cell, or you can split the cells if you need, um, if you need to increase capacity, you just split them. But once you, um, if, if you merge them, that's, um, you would reduce the handovers. So if this is the same department to make sure that, you know, they all belong under the same cell to, to reduce the, uh, the uh, um, so this is better for the coverage. This is better for the capacity. Now we're done with the uh, E node Bs. So the, the user at the user end, we do have um, CPEs and it's categorized on a low end and high end and a 5G. So we have CAT4, CAT6, and then I'm gonna just focus on the CAT15. This is, um, this is one of the um, highest gain CPE out on the market. It is, it, it is, it works on both band 48 and band 41. And it's, it is, it, the, the carrier aggregation, it aggregates four carrier components on a downlink and two carrier components on an uplink. And it's MIMO four by four on a downlink. Modulation is already at 256 QAM downlink. That's why you're gonna get uh, throughputs 580 megabits per second on a downlink and 30 megabits per second on, on an uplink. So this is a hot seller for us right here. And then we have the same version, CAT15, but as an EUD. If you remember EUD, uh, the maximum power is 23 dBm. So it's exactly the same, but we reduce the power on the transmit from, from um, you know, 23 down to five. Why? Because the five and the eight, 18 dBi for, for the antenna gain, that will give us 23, that will give us the maximum. So you can use this, this um, CPE if you're closer to the radio. And, and you know, I'll save the operator, you know, $3 a month. Uh, and no need for a certified installer to come and install it for you. So it, it's the same. Uh, it has uh, two carrier components on a downlink uh, or, and two on an uplink. MIMO is four by four and the data rates are, are, are the same, 580 and 30, okay? Then if you remember, we I talked about the LTE turbo, the gigabit of speed where it has the dual, you know, the CBRS mode and the LTE and the Wi-Fi 6. This device right here, it's designed for that. It will pick up and aggregate both bands, um, the uh, LTE, CBRS, and the Wi-Fi, and you will get into the, um, the gigabits of speed right here, right? So um, it has internal antennas, the CBRS with, it, with, a, with 11 dBi, and for the uh, um, 
the, 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 sorry, the turbo is 11 dBi and the Wi-Fi is uh, is both are 11 dBi's, but but the the uh, the LTE is two by two MIMO. Um, that sorry, the turbo is two by two MIMO and the LTE is four by four MIMO. Then we move to the 5G CPE. So this CPE is 5G ready and it supports both LTE and 5G, so both bands 48 and 41 and N41 and N48 or N78. Um, it, is, it aggregates up to four carrier aggregation on, up, on a downlink and two carrier aggregation on uplink. Modulation is 256 QAM both on downlink and uplink. And it, is, it, it has the uh, uh, five gigahertz of Wi-Fi support. So 802.11 AC. And the data, rate, data rates are one gigabits per second on a downlink and 150 megabits per second on an uplink. Indoor, uh, we do have uh, quite a few um, products right here. Um, so CAT 50, sorry, starting CAT 4, CAT 6. So CAT 6, we have, um, it, it, it aggregates, it all work on band on band 48 and 41. Um, the the uh, CAT6 has 6 dBi of, of uh, antenna gain for for LT for band 48 and 5 dBi for band 41. It aggregates two carrier components uh, on a downlink, and the modulation is 64 QAM. That will give us a data throughput rates of 220 megabits per second on a downlink and 150 on an uplink. And this has the 2.4 gigahertz of, of uh, the Wi-Fi. This one, it's more or less the same, but we've introduced Wi-Fi 5, the 5 gigahertz band. And it is a uh, 4x4 um, MIMO. And the throughputs going to be the same, 220 and 150. CAT 12, we're introducing Wi-Fi 6, which is the 802.11ax IEEE protocol. Bands the same, 48 and 41. Aggregation, three carrier components now on a, on a, on a, on a downlink and two carrier, two carrier components on an uplink. 4x4 four four MIMO, 256 QAM, that would give us, that would double the speeds of the previous ones. So you will have 440 uh, megabits per second on a downlink and 30 megabits per second on, on an uplink. Then we have the same right here, but on, on a Wi Fi 5 support, right? Then we move to um, CAT 15 right here. And it is it is um, it supports both bands the uh, 48 and, and 41. It is two T2R diversity, so there's four receive antennas in there. Carrier aggregation, three carrier components on a downlink and two on an uplink. 256 QAM of of modulation um, that will give us two five five eighty megabits per second on a downlink and 30 megabits per second on uplink. And it will um, work, um, it, is, it, is, it, is, it has a Wi-Fi 6 as well. So you can use it uh, as a, a normal Wi-Fi um, and as, as a LTE CPE at the same time. We're introducing 5G indoor CPE right here with Wi-Fi 6 support, it supports um, New the the new bands 48 and uh, 40 uh, and 41 uh, 40, 48 only here and LTE band 48. So it, it is uh, it's the first 5G indoor CPE that we have. Four carrier four carrier components on a play on a downlink and two on a, on a downlink. Four by four MIMO and 256 QAM. And that will give you the, the throughputs of um, one gigabits per second on a downlink and 150 on an uplink. And it has the Wi Fi 6 AX uh, support. Then we have industrial CPEs. 
these are uh, rugged by the, you know, they're designed for um, uh, factories, automation, um, you know, um, ports, trucks, you know, anything that has to do with, with, uh, with rugged uh, IoT um, environment. And it's 5G, 4G ready. And depending on the model, you can have, um, here you have two interfaces, here you have five interfaces, and they both support uh, bands in 48, in, in 78, and, uh, and the, the um, B48 as well. Um, they have also um, the Wi-Fi, um, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz of band. Then we have here 5G um, uh, rugged uh, CPE with um, uh, with fiber interfaces, and uh, also it has um, MSATA USB uh, 3.0. So these are just you know for you to know that um, we also have products for automations and and for factories and for IoT. Um, this is an overall end-to-end -end architecture, just to put things in perspective. The user equipment right here it could be a CPE, it could be a surveillance camera, it could be your smartphone, it could be um, a drone, um, a sensor, automated guided vehicle for, for warehouses. So we cater for any kind of uh, a standard uh, 3GPP um, user equipment. You can connect to our eNode bees, um, in which they, the the back hole would would be through either fiber or Ethernet or even wireless. Here we have the five G setup where you actually can connect to RRU, and you can you know if you remember the R hub or the extension unit, and then front hole to bab to BBU, and then you back hole it to the your core core network whether it's local or in the cloud, and then you have your own applications, you know, for voice services or, or any needed application that you, you can have on top of uh, the network for your uh, specific users. For education, we do have three different uh, products. We have the, the, uh, the MiFi pocket router, which supports uh, 41, band 41 and band 48. It's sleek in design, and it's it, it's um, it's a Wi-Fi. You look at it as a Wi-Fi spot. You insert the uh, CBRS SIM here, um, or band 41, and you get uh, you get Wi-Fi um, in, in your location, and it supports uh, up to um, 10 Wi-Fi Wi-Fi users per um, per device. Then we have the Snap router. This is, uh, again, it's, it's a router, um, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. It supports um, the, the uh, um, it will give you the indoor um, Wi-Fi that you, you need. And it has, it, it, it connects to the um, CPEs through um, power over ethernet to power them up. Then we have the Chromebook, which is you know the normal Chromebook with with a built-in um, LTE module right here. Okay, and that's all for me, and um, we're ready for any of your questions.